We're ready to put it all together and embroider a design from start to finish on the Husqvarna Viking Designer Brilliance 80. So first off, I've just gone ahead and selected a design from the sampler booklet. And I was looking for a design that didn't have a ton of stitches, a couple color changes, so I could show you a few things along the way, and that it wasn't too big. So I am noticing this design actually has four colors. This is recommended, the black numbers are a Sulky brand and the red numbers are a Robus and Anton, just to give you some ideas of what those numbers are. But really what I'm after, just the fact that there's four different steps. I could sew that all in one color Color if I want. There's a monochrome feature that allows us to do, just let it sew color one through four without stopping. But if I want, I need to choose four different colors for this design. It shows me that it is 2,500 stitches and it gives it the height and width of the design. Now remember, I could make that 20% bigger or 20% smaller if I needed to make it uh, fill in an area at a better size. Okay, so B 89 is what I'm looking for. So for getting started, I, that's exactly what you wanna do. Just go ahead and do start new. So if you're working with a design that's built into the machine or you're ready to access your USB stick that has a design on it, that's where you're gonna start. Now I've just turned the machine on so it has not calibrated the embroidery arm yet. I have no hoop attached to it, but I often set my embroidery hoop that I'm ready to use just on the bed of the machine and towards the inside of the machine. And as soon as that embroidery arm comes over and it tells me to attach it, I'm actually right in position to do that. So let's start with the OK button. So every time you turn the machine on, you'll hear the embroidery arm do its little dance and calibration. So I am looking for the B menu and with the B menu selected, I'm gonna, I've got a lot of scrolling to do. I'm looking for stitch number 89. And like I've always said, these designs look so much better stitched out. So if you're just kind of wandering around, wondering what you should stitch, just pick one like I'm gonna do. I've actually never stitched this design before, but stitch number 89 kind of fit what I was looking for. So I've touched it once. It does tell me right here the information about that design, the size and the colors and the stitches. So if you just touch it once, you'll kind of learn what that design size is. So if you don't have your book close by, that's one way to find out. So to bring this design onto the screen, touch and hold. After you touch and hold, it will come in. And it might come in slightly not centered. So first thing to do is even just to touch that center plus in between all those arrows and just bring it on in. Now I have told the machine which hoops I do own and based on the size of the design, it is recommending that I use hoop 260 by 200. And that's actually what I have uh, actually already um, hooped up and ready to use. But if I was going to use a different hoop, I would need to tell the machine now, not later, that this that is the hoop you're gonna use. So you can't use a hoop uh, that you haven't told the machine you're using. Okay, so if I want the design to stitch in another position, I can have it come down to maybe a, a corner. Today I'm gonna actually have it come down to the lower lowest edge, but I want it centered. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I use often. So you notice when I move the design outside the stitching area, the red box around the hoop area shows. So the easiest way to get this to be touching the most current edge of the hoop is to open the toolbox and touch the bottom option. That is a put the design back into the hoop. It's the easiest way to do it. You don't have to guess, it just sets it there. If you want this design to be in the most um, lower corner or top corner, take the design out both the left and the lower edge, then touch it and it will be hugging that corner edge. So I want it to actually be at the lowest one, but I also want it to be centered. So let me show you how I can choose to make it perfectly centered into that position. So right down here, I'm not gonna worry about the up and down, but I am gonna worry about the um, side to side. And it says 1.4, because I can tell I'm really close. But if I touch that number, the little keypad comes up and I can touch zero. And it will then put it right into the middle of that hoop. So I just wanted to show you a few extra things that you can do. Of course, you can rotate it and size it, just like we've talked about. But at this point, uh, that is exactly where I want it to stitch. So touch go. 
You'll always get this screen to pop up before you get to embroider. So welcome to the embroidery stitch out. It confirms that I do have my straight stitch throat plate on. It is showing me which hoop I have selected. So at a glance, yes, that is what I want. Sensor Q foot. And we are gonna get into these other options in a few other videos. But honestly, if you're just picking a design and you're ready to stitch, you just go ahead and touch continue. You should glance at that hoop. That's the one that people are um, needing to look at. This is when you attach the hoop. You don't do it before that embroidery arm moves over. You can see it now in the embroidery position. So you can go ahead and slide it into place. So let me talk about the bracket of this hoop. You are going to find you'll get the right feel for how to put it on. I do want you to use some muscles when you do so. You're gonna bring this edge all the way back until it aligns with the opening along this edge. There's kind of a separation there. And you're just gonna go ahead and push it hard until you hear a click. That's the click we're looking for. Did you notice I didn't touch anything when I was pushing that on? So to remove the hoop, you're gonna push down on the lever and pull towards you, and now the hoop is removed. Just don't push down on this while you're hooping. So just hands off, the only time you touch is for removal. So push it in, get it started, and then go for the click. Be strong, I need you to click that in at every single time. All right, so attaching the hoop, we have done that. So touch okay. So I wanna show you around the screen that we are now at. We only get here once we've touched go and when we're ready to embroider. So we have a couple new things that we can see. We can see how many colors there are, color one, two, three and four, kind of the size of these color blocks indicate which one actually takes the most time to stitch. Uh, these will count down once we get started, but I can tell that color three and color four don't have very many stitches in them. So that is really nice to uh, take a peek at. Um, the one thing I do use before I start to stitch is the feature that allows me to check around a design. So the design positioning, which is actually this yellow flower with the four arrows. So when I touch this, we're going to a new screen. And I want you to get used to going here because there's a couple things I use all the time. So first off, if we had hooped crooked, we will do a video on how you hoop crooked and then get it all lined up. Um, we use this design positioning screen for this as well. But I, what I want you to use is this. So if you open up the toolbox, so you do have to open that to remind yourself, oh, that's where it is. These little corner options allows me to see where the top part of my design is going to stitch. You wanna always know where that design is going to be, just in case you get too close to something, you are over further than you thought you were. But right now, this is showing me the upper left corner. I can touch the next one, that's the upper right corner. You can see that little box going around the screen and, and the lower edge. It does get nice and close to this edge, so you just wanna make sure that uh, that is what you were planning for. But the most important one is the one people always ask, where, how do I find the center of my design? How do I can see my needle at the center? So by touching the little one with the plus, that is showing me the center of the design. That, and that's just a reference point. Now, if you do need to move this, I can go ahead and move this up or down. Um, I'm actually going to not re uh, keep those changes, but right now that needle is that plus. So if I wanna make sure that this is over here, that's where I was planning on stitching. That's the center of the design. I can see, I can get it exactly where I want it to be. I'm gonna X out of that because I just want it to go back to normal. But if you wanted to keep it, okay would be the correct answer. All right, so you'll see that I'll get a little message. Do you wanna cancel all adjustments that have been made? Okay, so now it's back to normal. All right, so for starting to stitch, I've just gone ahead and picked a color, put it on the machine. I have my sensor Q foot on, I have an embroidery needle. I've got two layers, a stabilizer behind my cotton, so and that's tear away. At all times, I always use two layers of stabilizer. You're gonna get a better result, trust me. And I also have my embroidery thread 
on a optional thread stand that you can put on that vertical spool pin. Um, and so it goes all the way up there and it just makes life a little bit easier. I am a fan of thread stands. So that is one thing that I do like to do. We are now ready to start embroidering. I'm on color one of the four colors we're doing. You're gonna gently hold on to the thread and select the start stop button. Now that is different than the stop button. Make sure your stop button is lit up. That will indicate that there will be a color stop at each of the four colors. If for any reason that does get off the stop, well, you don't get a stop. It will continue all four colors in uh, one pass without it stopping at any time. So just make sure that if you want color changes, make sure that light is on. So I'm reaching below that, touching the start stop button. I'm also going to want the machine to cut this thread so I can pull it out. So I need to gently hold on to this thread and I'm gonna count to three. When you count to three, you'll feel the, there's a little cutter down in the bobbin area that will cut this thread and allow you to pull it out. So if we're all set up and ready to stitch, we're gonna push the start button going to count one, two, three. So see how I was able to pull that thread out? Now it's ready to stitch. So at this point, we can see that the how many stitches total that this color will be. It's 2,500 stitches. It's going to take approximately two minutes to stitch. So I do like that on this machine that you do find that it will stop, trim, and kind of hide the jump stitches as it goes down, which is great. Uh, you don't have to go back and trim out the designs as you go. So we're just gonna let this whole thing stitch. There's that little cut and it pulls and then like sucks the little tail down. Love it, love it, love it. So after it stops, it does come up with a change thread. Just remember, you don't have to put that color of thread on the machine. It's just a recommendation how it was saved originally. Now you can put new thread in and just push the start stop button. You don't have to touch OK, but sometimes I like to know what area is it going to stitch next? Now, speaking of that, I have not showed you how to set it up so it can show you which area was pink. Did you notice that we have three areas that are colored pink, one, two, and three, and then the last one shows like white or grayish. So this is a function that once you turn it on, the machine will remember it, which I love. And again, this is another function that a lot of machines do not have, and they really wish they did, but it is found on this particular model. All right, so right here, when we are looking at the color block list, the middle one has a picture of a flower with one of the petals turned pink. Okay, so not just because our design is pink, but just because that's the picture color. All right, so when we touch it, what we find is that whatever it's going to stitch is the color that is darkest. Now, you don't see the rest of the design. It's probably really grayed out, which it is, but it is still kind of shadowed behind here. Let me go back and show you what I'm talking about. So if we went back to color one, we see what we have stitched so far that's what shows on screen. As we go to, or it advances to color two, I can know at this point, oh gosh, what do I want that color to be? And maybe I'm kind of making up colors uh, as I go, which I've been known to do. So I'm like, oh, maybe I'll do a teal. And then for this third color, oh yeah, that's the part that's gonna be kind of up in, in the kind of French knot look. And then the last one, again, it might be a little hard to see, but it is the leaf in the white area. Let me show you how it'd be easier to see that when your color matches your background. Come up to the Joy of OS Advisor and change the background color. So we don't want a pinkish, but if we even we just darken this up a bit. So let's go to a darker gray. Minimize this, don't push start new, that'd start you over. But see how now we can see that leaf and that would be what the last color is. So at any given time, you can kind of roll through your design and see which area it's gonna stitch. You know how many hard times it's, it is to find a design, especially when you get into animals. You find that there's gray and there's brown and there's dark brown and light brown and there's all this fur color and you don't know where that is actually gonna stitch. Is it doing the face now or is it not? Um, when you're trying to get 
get some highlights to match. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead and change thread. You will see me pulling the thread off the machine and out the needle. Embroidery thread is not so much linty. Embroidery is, is not traditionally linty. Um, you will see me do the little flossy floss every time I rethread the machine that makes sure that you get down in those tension discs. Uh, catch that last guide and if you have not mastered your needle threader, make sure you have done so because embroidery is when you really need it. So I'm gently holding this thread. I'm pushing the start stop button. Count to three. One, two, three. That's when you pull on the thread and it pulls out and we'll let it stitch the next color. That sound always makes me happy knowing my design is finished. Now on a side note, if you have connected your cell phone with the app and your MySoNet, you would have also gotten a text message, a notification that your embroidery was done. So do make sure you check out how to get your MySoNet account, your free MySoNet account set up so you can be notified should you wander off and your design is done. All right, so tell me that doesn't look better than the picture I showed you at the beginning in the book. Now, one thing I did choose, this was color three where the um, kind of French knots stitch and then I just went ahead and left the same color on and push start again and that leaf stitched out with the same color something that you can do so instead of having four different colors you can choose what colors you might repeat now let's take a look at what the back looks like and let's talk tension just a little bit okay so on the back of our hoop here i'll just bring it in like this we should be seeing the color from the stitching you should be able to see the color from the top pulled down to the back. Now, since I have white stabilizer and I also have white bobbin thread, we don't really see the bobbin thread, but it is there. But I should be uh, haloed with the color of the actual stitches. Now, sometimes when we flip this over, people see that this looks messy. Now, if this design was gonna be shown on the front and back, like a tea towel, you're gonna see both sides, you might want to check out how to turn off the thread cutter. Now there's nothing wrong with the machine. So when you did see it stop and cut for each kind of jump that it did, it pulls the threads to the back, cuts them off and leaves a little tail. So all this is is just the little tail getting stitched in in some weird direction into the next part of the embroidery. But if you're never gonna see the back of this, this does not bother me at all all. But for something with a lot of jumps, like in between small letters, uh, sometimes when I've done recipe towels, that's when I will like to turn off the thread cutter. There's nothing wrong with that. You're just in charge of cutting the stitches on the front. So for any reason you did not get the color of the thread pulled to the back, now we need to adjust tension. So most of the time with embroidery, you would adjust the tension to be a smaller number, meaning if it's smaller on the top, then it will get pulled to the back even more. It makes the bobbin stronger, pulls that top thread down to the back. And I'll show you where that tension actually is adjusted. So it's down here right on the screen where it says 50. So remember a minus, a smaller number will reduce the top tension. And that is usually, I'll go down to 45, 40. If I'm still seeing bobbin thread on top, then I'll go down even lower. So just make sure that you really thread the machine as I was showing you to get the best results. So that's what you need to do. When you're done with the design, go ahead and touch the return arrow. That will go ahead and move that embroidery arm all the way to the side. And when you're ready to delete the design off your screen, you can touch it. You can touch and hold and touch the uh, delete trash can or you can even come to the toolbox and touch the trash can there and that will clear it off and get you ready 
to go and find your next design.